Welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health, a podcast of resources for restoring vigor and vitality, bringing you top influencers in the men's health arena, case studies of men who have succeeded and how they did it, and cutting edge teaching on men's health issues from America's leading men's health guru, Dave Scadam. Get ready to take steps towards good health. Here's your host, Dave Scadam. Hey, welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited about these series of podcasts that I've been doing called Your Story, where I'm just interviewing guys that I've met and got in contact with about their journey to good health, the, the things that they've done really well, some missteps sometimes people make. And um, it was really exciting to hear everyone's perspective, different people's perspectives on their journey to good health. I think it's so um, so exciting for me to think about all the ways that people have traveled this road of life and found um, satisfaction. And that's what I hope to do is just to inspire you as you listen to these things and hear how people have done it and glean what you can from them and uh, hopefully be entertained a little bit as well. And I'm especially excited to have on my podcast a guy that I've known for a long time. I met him through an organization I belong to called Toastmasters, where we work on improving our leadership and communication skills. And um, Tom, this is Tom Potter. And Tom, I'm so glad you're on the show. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, you bet, Dave. Glad to be here. All right. Hey, so Tom has, well, a few years ago, retired from the USDA. He was worked for Natural Res. You can correct me if I'm wrong here, but Natural Resource Conservation Service, and uh, has done a, did a great job there. Put in a lot of years and retired from that. He's married, has um, three kids and eight grandkids. And um, one of the things that is so intriguing to me about Tom is, is that he's uh, built this incredible business through Amway where he's helped people uh, do some really successful things in their life. And I think Tom's going to talk about that a little bit today. But, Tom, I always like to t- start these podcasts off w- in this way. And I, I'm always curious to hear what is getting Tom Potter out of bed in the morning? What's turning your crank these days, Tom? Well, Dave, I'm I'm a pretty busy guy. You know, I uh, spent years working for the government, and uh, after that, I had a, a lot of projects on the list that I wanted to accomplish. And so that's what I do these days. I, I really like to build things. And hmm. currently, I'm building a pole barn out on my property. Um, I'm, I'm working on building a couple of churches. I'm going to be building kitchen cabinets. Um, so a lot of things like that that, that keep me busy. Wow, really? Yeah, you know, I I still remember that those pictures you showed me of that canoe you built out of wood and how fascinating and how, like, that that was like a huge project and it turned out so beautiful. Do you still have that canoe? Yeah, I do. And that's, wow. you know, that's pretty little compared to the things I do today. I've got a, yeah. a 1964 Chris Craft Constellation, which is an old cabin cruiser <sighs> that I'm going to rebuild. And so that's, that's wow. one of my top things on my list. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh, man. So, yeah, the canoe is a little miniature. Just to, just get your toe in the water a little bit compared to that. Wow, that's yeah. great. So well, always, always something to do. And that's, you know, that's, yeah. you know, we're talking about health. And I think one of, the, one of the things you have to do in life is keep busy and have, keep things in mm-hmm. front of you, keep goals and dreams, you know, in front of yeah. you and always striving to achieve new things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cool. Hey, so I'm, I'm kind of like an amateur historian, I, and I, I love reading historical books and hearing like, things about our past. And, and when I think of uh, men's health, my, my mind kind of wanders back to the Greek and Roman era when, when you, you see these sculptures and this is on my bucket list to go see these in person, but I've seen pictures of them where a guy just like takes a hammer and a chisel and he starts pounding on some, uh, some, some marble. And at some point, eventually this incredible statue comes out of this big rock. And it's just like his idea of what a healthy man 
looks like. And, I, and if, if Tom Potter could put a, an ideal man up on one of those Greek or Roman pillars, how, how would that, what would that person look like? What's that ideal healthy man in Tom Potter's eyes? Well, I guess that would be me. <laughs> right. um, I agree with that. <laughs> well, I've, uh, it, it's funny, you know. It's I. I'm actually very healthy for my age. I'm I'm 61 years old, and I've I've tried to lead a very healthy life. I, you know, I'm a a late baby boomer. I'm part of that generation, mm-hmm. and so I grew up with the the food pyramid and. You know, hearing about how fat made you fat and all these different things that um, are so off base these days. You know, we've mm-hmm. come a long ways in, in knowledge as far as, you know, eating properly and what can keep you healthy. And I had um, my mother um, died at age 56 from an early onset mm-hmm. Alzheimer's disease. And my wow. father uh, lived till about 81, uh, but he struggled with pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and things like that. And I just, you know, I look at that, and it's like most of those things are environmental. You know, there's some genetics yeah. involved. But for the right. most part, it's decisions you make along the way. And so yeah. I made a promise to myself that I was going to try my best to avoid falling into the trap that so many people fall into of, eating wrong and not having enough activity and all those kind of things in life. And so, you know, I've tried to pattern my life around other successful people. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you know, I think I've lived a pretty successful life. Yeah. Yep. You know, uh, when you say that it's environmental and, and it's choices that we make, it's that, that rings so true to me because I've seen, you know, people around me that have chosen, you know, just to continue on. I, I call it the, the sad diet, the standard American diet, where we're, we're eating so much processed foods and stuff that's just so unhealthy for us. And it, and the impact that that has when you put that that kind of food in your mouth, it's almost like a a poison, really. It goes in and yeah. creates so many so many problems that you just described, from you know diabetes to cancer and heart disease and um, dementia and all those things. I, I it's, that's so I think that's such a big deal for us to get a handle on that. So way to go there. So, if, a, Tom, if you, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I have a degree in, in forestry and wildlife, and so yeah. I've always um, been enamored by the outdoors, and so I try mm-hmm. to incorporate that into my life. I've never been really yeah. good at just exercising for the sake of exercising, but mm-hmm. I try and involve myself in activities that I really enjoy that, that do keep me active. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just just something that gets your heart rate up and gets your body moving and gets your keeps your muscles yeah. active. That's that's really important. Absolutely. So so we so we got this ideal man up on one of these pillars now, Tom. So if you now let's flip that around. What do you think it is in our society or in in your sphere of influence and knowledge that what is it? A couple key things that make guys unhealthy if if, if uh, diet and exercise makes us healthy what is it tell us tell us more about what it is that makes us an unhealthy for people well part of it is just not paying attention but mm-hmm. i know that you know in the job that i had you know i was a gis professional which meant i spent all day sitting behind a computer you know, doing things on mm-hmm. screen and i can remember probably it was about 12 years ago, it was probably one of the most unhealthiest points in my life. Mm-hmm. And I was approaching, I think, about 230 pounds, which is a lot for, you know, I'm six one, mm-hmm. but still that's a lot. And yeah. I, I was just thinking that, gosh, my 36-inch waist pants aren't fitting very well anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, I happened to be listening to the radio, and I heard this, seminar that a local chiropractor was doing about healthy living and all that. I thought, you know, I'm going to go to that and 
Let's see what he has to say. And one of the things that they, they did was they gave me this book called, um, what is it? It was um, Cruise Ships and Nursing Homes. Okay. Mm. That's a decision that wow. you can make. You know, and, wow. you know when, as you approach, you know, the later years in your life, you know, you see these older people that are doing absolutely amazing things yeah. while people their exact same age are barely able to get out of a chair. Yeah. You know, and uh, so what I started doing was I started, um, well, on my lunch break, I'd walk two miles instead of going to the fast food restaurants. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started doing things like portion control and you know, eating better and got my weight yeah. back down to um, 175 pounds. Uh, wow. And currently I'm maintaining at about 185, so I'm pretty happy there. Back to wow. a size wow. 34 pants and, you know, yeah. trying to stay in good shape. That's, that's pretty think, incredible. Like, like I say, it's all, it's all dis- decisions. And, you know, for a lot of people, it's lack of time. They just don't think about what they're doing. They end up in this trap of, you know, going to work and coming home and flopping on the couch and grabbing a bag of chips and watching TV and all that kind of stuff. And they, they don't realize that those little things that they do every day add up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I especially liked what you said about regarding exercise there's there's people who just it seems like they thrive in like a gym environment and or or maybe there's somebody that's like trying to do a marathon or something like that but uh, some sometimes that is like repulsive <laughs> you know it's like normal people and i i really like the way you phrase that where you like to find activities that you could do that keep keep your body moving that you enjoy, and um, it well, sounds like you found some. Of it. W- w- tell tell us more about that. What, what what have you found that you like that keeps your body well? You know, to, to be honest, Dave, it's just I find working out at a gym boring. Um, yeah, I know you can put a headset on or whatever it happens to be, but you know, I'd re- I'd rather be out taking a walk. I'd rather be out canoeing a river. I'd rather strap on a set of cross country skis. And, you know, just get out in the in the world, into nature, and, you know, move the muscles around, breathe a little faster, and, and do things like yeah. that than sit there and pump iron or pace on a treadmill yeah. or, or whatever. And so right. I, I, I've never been able to exercise for the sake of exercise. It's yeah. always been do something. Yeah. Constructive. Yeah, do something yeah. that gets gets me out of the house, gets gets some blood pumping. Even like I say, yeah. when I was when I was working full time, just getting out at lunch and walking two miles, you know, mm. at yeah. a fast pace, you know, that was that was great, great exercise for me. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> what? Now we kind of touched on this a little bit. So if you look back over your life. And and so you know you know what you should be doing. You should be heading in this healthy way. What tell us about some of the biggest struggles that you've had? You you mentioned that sitting in that office was um, challenging for you. But what, it, what, anything else that you can think of in your life where it's been a pretty big challenge for you to stay a health, as a healthy person. Well, definitely a, a sedentary lifestyle, you know, with or a sedentary job is a challenge. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is just time. You know, people yeah. are busy these days, you know, especially, you know, when you're young, you're raising a family, you got kids and stuff like that. It's, it's just hard to make time for yourself sometimes to do stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. Um, food is always a challenge, <laughs> yeah. you know, if, yeah. if you like right. to eat. You know, I, I like to yeah. go on cruise ships, you know, and yeah. the the opportunity to eat there is just incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah, jeez. It's like blasting out in front of you. <laughs> yeah. But you, yeah. you learn to, to make good decisions and good choices and, you know, yeah, you can still do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. 
So if you, this is something I'm really interested to see what you're going to say about this, Tom. If, if when you look back over your life, a lot of the guys that I've talked to on this show have have pointed to either like key key circumstances, situations, or people that came into their life that that really impacted them, and and it, it was kind of like a did a, they did a 180 after they came into this circumstance or met this person or did this certain thing, they were going one way and it just radically changed their life. Can you, can you look back over your life and tell us about a time where you were kind of headed maybe in a more unhealthy way or whatever. And because of this person or circumstance or whatever it is you came across that it, it, it really changed you and you became, and you start heading a different direction. Is there a, can you think of any well, times yeah, like that I, in your life? Yeah, you know, and one, one of those times I talked about already was, you know, that seminar I went to. But the yeah. other thing was um, when we were invited to take a look at the Amway business and mm-hmm. ended up getting started in that, mm-hmm. what I found was that um, there's a real need for mentorship in the world. And yeah. that's what I found in the Amway business. Uh, Mm -hmm. Amway owns Neutralite, which is the largest Mm -hmm. vitamin and supplement company in the world. And I've been taking supplements, you know, pretty much all my adult life. You know, for the last 23 Mm -hmm. years, I've taken these these high-quality supplements. And I think that's really important to people because even if you try and eat properly, uh, the food that we get today in this this mass produced agricultural yeah. world is just not as healthy as it used to be. It's just not as nutritious. And by properly supplementing, uh, you can help fill in the gaps. And when yeah. you fill in the gaps nutritionally, um, it's it's amazing how much better you feel and how less you feel like you have cravings for things because you already have what you need. Right. That's cool. So, you know, something you, something you hit on there that I, it's kind of like a theme throughout this podcast is, is the need for mentorship and, and it's, it's so critical for, for us to run into people or purposefully find people that we can, follow and uh, get mentored from them. And, and, and it also makes me think of, you know, the people in my life where that are maybe younger me than me or not as far along as I am and, and the impact that I can have on them by just saying some encouraging words or getting them little nuggets of wisdom that I've learned. And um, so how, how is it that in the Amway business, how is it that, this mentoring ship thing came about. I don't really, I'm not connecting Amway with mentoring. Yeah. So what, how, how well, did that work you, out for you? <laughs> if you think about it, Dave, you, me, everybody, we're all some of the decisions that we've made up to this point. Right. Yeah. Right. And we've taken ourselves about as far as we can go based on the knowledge we have and all that. And so it, I feel that it's really important to be in contact with people that know more than me, that have achieved more than I have achieved, that are, that are healthier than I am, that are more financially successful, that are more spiritually successful. Because health just isn't, a, just isn't just a physical trait. I mean, there's... I yeah. you know you talk about the four pillars of health, and so there's yeah. there's many aspects to it right. beyond just being mm-hmm. physically healthy. And so, in the Amway business, <laughs> it's funny. There's there is the Amway business where we sell products and we sponsor people and things like that. Yeah. But there's another mm-hmm. organization that supports that called Worldwide Dream Builders, and I, mm. quite frankly, I just love the name. Uh, because yeah. we help people, you know, build dreams uh, and build a better life. And it's mm-hmm. not just, you know, financially. It's not just 
you know, health-wise. It's in all aspects. And through that business, I've been able to connect to um, countless people like, you know, well, like John Maxwell, who is one of hmm. the, the greatest leadership teachers in the world. He's a, he's a big yeah. part of um, my life through that business. Um, wow. I've learned from, you know, other successful people. You know, it's, it's important to be a lifelong learner and to you yeah. know, always challenge yourself, always have goals set for yourself, always to you know, strive to accomplish more. If you're not moving ahead, you're moving backwards by default. And yeah. so this has given me an opportunity and an avenue where I can tie into more successful people and then in turn share that mentorship down from me and help other people along the way. And so it's a, wow. when you involve your life into the lives of other people, um, I can't think of a more satisfying way to live. Yeah, exactly. That is so good. Okay, Tom, here's the second to the last question. But Now, I have just put a crown on your head and given you a magic scepter or a magic wand and you can wave this magic wand over the earth <laughs> and make it a much more healthy place for all mankind. What are you going to do with that magic wand? Tell us what you're going to do with this magic wand. You know, it, that's a, a very interesting question, Dave, and I've actually thought about this a lot. <laughs> um, because, <laughs> you know, I thought about things like, what if I could have everybody just lose 15 pounds? if I could have everybody Mm. eat better, if I could have everybody develop a relationship with Jesus or, you know, something like that. Yeah. And, you know, I I got to thinking that none of that requires any magic. Mm. Those are all just decisions that you can make on your own or if you know how, you know. And so almost everything I thought of was the same way. You know, it's a yeah. decision you could make. And so if I, if I did have that magic, I would, um, I would want to grant people knowledge. I would want to grant mm-hmm. them wisdom. And, you know, I, if to, to be more specific, I would say I would love to see people join the Amway business with me because that's mm-hmm. where I learned about relationships. I learned about nutrition. Mm-hmm. I learned about how to have a great marriage. I learned how to communicate and have dreams and how to show gratitude and be generous and, and all the things that, you know, make me healthy physically, but also spiritually and in mm-hmm. other aspects of my life. And so I, yeah. I, I would wish to grant people knowledge. Yeah, that's great. So t- let, let's, uh, I got one more question for you, but I, before we get into that, I, just tell us a little bit more. Now, so I, I've had, you know, I've, I, what I know about Amway is, you know, people, it seems like people get a little pushy and I'm not sure if I want to get involved, but it seems like what you're saying is this group of people is pretty high caliber and just being around these higher caliber type of people, it's, it raises yourself up to that level. And um, so tell us a little bit more about Amway and how, how somebody could get involved with it and why you think it, that's, in, that's important, like you just said. Well, um, if, if anybody wants to contact me about this, they can. Um, mm-hmm. The best way to get a hold of me is by email, and it would be DCE, like Delta Charlie Echo, 00 mm-hmm. at Outlook.com. Uh, mm-hmm. And I could definitely explain to them more about it. But... I'm sure you're familiar with the golden rule, Dave. Mm-hmm. You know, treat others as you'd like to be treated. Yeah. You know, there's there's all these urban legends about, you know, Amway, and, and you've talked about people being pushy and all that, but, you know, if, yeah. would you be pushy? No, I wouldn't be pushy. I, I'm not either. <laughs> and yeah. so... Yeah, I know that. Know, I, look, I, look for people, I look for people that are looking for a better life. And yeah. when I find people that uh, are looking for a better life, I help them achieve it. You know, that's kind of yeah. my attitude with the Amway business. Um, uh, cool. It's a, it's a chance to be an entrepreneur uh, and to control your own destiny. And that's, that's what I 
you know, really like about it. You know, and I, you know, I didn't come on this to, uh, to, pro, to really promote my Amway business, but I, I have to admit, yeah. Dave, that it, it's made me the person that I am today, you know, health-wise yeah. and, and otherwise. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, but see, Tom, I, I, like, just like I said at the beginning, every, each one of us has this unique path that we've traveled, and, and this is your path. And I think a lot of people need to hear about what has, has helped you become a healthy person and a successful, like I know that you are. And um, so I, I'm not, I don't shy away. I, I wouldn't shy away from it if I was you. And also, Tom, I'm going to put your um, your email in our our show notes. So if anybody didn't catch that, it's dce00 at outlook.com. But it'll be in the show notes if you miss that, if you're driving or something. And you can pull that up and uh, get a hold of Tom that way. All right. So, Tom, this is the way I like to end this thing is <clears throat> we've talked a lot about your journey. We've talked a lot about your thoughts on good health. And I, I just want you to wrap this up with any kind of closing thoughts or ideas about men's health and uh, your perspective on that. And if there's something that we've kind of missed or whatever, we want to refresh that and just uh, if, and if if there's um, – do, do you have like a website or anything like that that you operate, or is it mostly best contact is email? Um, I have a, a retailing website. That's, you know, that's okay. really it. But, you know, for more information in general, you know, the best way is to contact okay. me. So probably the probably best way is just email. Yeah. Okay. And, but as far so, as, you know, healthy living goes to kind of wrap things up, I think it's it's one of those things that that we need to pay attention to, and it's it's so easy for it to get away from us. You know, it's it's so easy to um, start to put on those extra pounds as you age, start to become more sedentary, and I think it's it's, it's something that we just need to keep in front of us. And, and remember that, you know, there's people out there that are living incredible, happy lives into old age, happy, healthy lives. And it's because they, they do it on purpose. You know, it's not, yeah. it doesn't happen by accident. It's, it's done on purpose. And there, there's something called the, the com- compound effect. You know, it's, it's the little decisions that add up. And the little decisions will either trend you in a downward direction or they'll trend you in an upward direction. And it's really important to make decisions that keep you moving forward. You've been listening to The Four Pillars of Men's Health with Dave Scadam. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit the 4 